Vishwa, hi, thank hi, you Christine. so much for doing this and taking the time. I'm delighted to have you with us. Thank you so much for having me. And I'm also thrilled to announce that Chinovic will invest $25 million in Enveda and become one of the largest shareholders in the business. What has led you to found the business and what do you believe in that most others will, would disagree with? You know, when um, I started Enveda, I had a very, very simple, almost reductionist thought which is the fundamental problem today in the drug discovery industry is that things that work in the lab don't work in people. And there's lots of amazing things many, many companies are doing to bridge that gap. But I asked myself, well, are there things that already work in people? Uh, and realized that the very origins of the pharmaceutical industry was humans observing other humans sampling their environment in the form of plants. And that's how we got some of the most iconic medicines that today still deliver relief to billions of people, like aspirin, warfarin, morphine, quinine, uh, artemisinin, which won a Nobel Prize. And that's when I said, great, what would it take to find the next 100 aspirins? And I realized that the fundamental blocker was we didn't really know what was in nature. And as a result, we didn't know what was in the thousands of plants that human cultures across millennia had identified as medicinally important through really brute force trial and error. Uh, and it was that realization that then led me to say, well, not only can we find new medicines in nature, we could probably unlock nature's chemical code, that which is in us, on us, and around us, to you know, maybe create the next chemical revolution like we have been riding on the waves of the genomic revolution. And after several sleepless nights of excitement, I said, I have to work on this. Um, so that brings me to your second question, which is people have tried this before. And I think one of the things that almost everyone believes in, and it's very convenient and exciting as a narrative, is that change only comes from innovation that hasn't been seen before. And I'd say a lot of the things that I believe in is an idea that actually a lot of change can happen by looking backward. In fact, I think many of today's ideas that at this moment are changing the way the world is have failed before and have been written off before. Digital cameras, electric cars, neural networks, statins, all of these were at one point discovered either ahead of their time because the world was not ready for them or because we didn't have the technology to execute that idea properly. So as Safi Bhakal says, all good ideas have died at least three deaths. And uh, for me, sequencing nature's chemical code, identifying that chemistry, and using it for discovering new therapeutics was clearly an idea that fit this pattern. And I said, you know, this is what I'll work on. There's amazing companies working on cell and gene therapies, but this was an idea that had failed before. But for me, that was not a deterrent. Brilliant. Um, and what would you say is, is new in the approach you're taking to really bring this to reality, given you said a lot of people have tried and failed with this? Yeah, I think um, the last real swing that anyone gave this was in the late 90s. And the only way that they would approach this idea is by isolating a molecule one at a time and asking two questions. What is the molecule and what does it do? And each of these endeavors was slow, painstaking, expensive, and error prone. And we realized that over the course of the last you know, 20, 30 years, humanity has been figuring out all the inefficient ways to do this, and in the process, creating massive data sets that enabled us to approach this problem differently. So one of the biggest unlocks that we've discovered and we've applied at Enveda is to use something called large language models to interpret the world's chemistry. So we realized that nature actually had a grammar, and this grammar was represented in something called um, mass spectrometry, that did, gave you a metabolomic fingerprint, which is a fancy way of saying you can take a molecule, you hit it with ionizing radiation, you break it apart, and there's logic and grammar in the way this molecule breaks apart that is interpretable with the very same algorithms that you use to translate from, say, English to German today. And once we understand this grammar, we're able to make predictions about what the molecule is and perhaps what it might do at a scale that has never been possible before. And that unlock for us has been meaningful and I would say 
uh, step function change in how we've been able to approach this historical problem of one at a time and turn it on its head. When I first heard that you're using large language models, which are of course famous for powering applications like ChatGPT in the life sciences, in chemistry, I was really stunned. Mm -hmm. um, but I also had lots of questions like, what is the data you can apply this to? How can you build validating feedback loops to train the models better? Um, and so really fascinating. And when I realized what you're doing, uh, I think this could be one of the big breakthroughs in science in general. Uh, and so really keen to, to hear you elaborate on this a little bit. Yeah, you know, the biggest problem that plagued this field before, and as I mentioned, it was a field that has probably had more than its share of three deaths, was that you couldn't really tell what a molecule was without doing an expensive experiment called NMR spectroscopy, where you needed to isolate every single molecule to sufficient purity and quantity and do this experiment that you know one of our advisors likes to say costs about $10,000 to $100,000, but between two weeks and a PhD, depending on how unlucky or lucky you are. And so we really had to find a way to turn this problem on its head. And that's when you know, I discovered that the phenomenal work of Peter Dorstein, our scientific co-founder, one of the world leaders in computational mass spec, who had collected you know, over several hundred million fingerprints that you get from an experiment called mass spectrometry or metabolomics, which is a fancy way of saying you can take a molecule and this sophisticated hardware today that breaks the molecule out into its constituent pieces to generate a fingerprint by hitting the molecule with radiation. And every time you do this experiment, you get the same fingerprint, just like perhaps you, know, you and I have a fingerprint that links to our face. Uh, but the beauty that we realized when looking at these hundreds of millions of fingerprints was that they presented an opportunity very similar to language models. And let me tell you what I mean. So today you can go on ChatGPT and you can ask it to translate between dozens of languages completely fluently in an instant. And e before you do that step, you can get creative and you can ask it to generate original content. So clearly it's able to translate between two embedding spaces, which is basically what's happening, even though it has never read that exact sentence before in its training. And we realized that this, this hundreds of millions of fingerprints of the world's chemistry were very similar in that there was context in the fingerprint, in that if there were certain pieces of the fragment and they occurred with other pieces, they always referred to one chemical structure or they had a particular meaning. So now what we realized was, well, you don't actually need to train on millions of sentences, say between English and German. You can just train a language model on millions of sentences of English, millions of sentences of German that are not related to your English sentences and still do a damn good job of translating between the two. So now we said this new mode of machine learning like language models required that there was meaning in context which nature seemed to have provided to us for free in the form of this mass spec data. So now we could train on the grammar of chemistry using mass spec and the grammar of chemistry using chemical structure, even though they were not paired before and get really good translation efficiency between the two. So all of a sudden we could take the dark chemical space of nature that no one had seen before and without needing to do expensive experiments one at a time, make predictions of hundreds of millions of molecules about what they are and the properties that they actually represent at scale. And you mentioned uh, the, about 5% of the world's chemistry is known to science and academia. Yep. That's how far we got so far. Uh, and of course, your technology and your platform might help drive this forward significantly. Yep. And so I'm wondering, how long does it take to get to an 80 or 90% uh, of known chemistry in the world? Uh, and what is possible at that point? Yeah, you know, the 5% number that we use is a generous and conservative overestimation because we don't want people to point fingers at a particular sample and say, hey, we know a lot of this. Um, in fact, we are finding that that number is a lot lower than 5% as more and more of the world's chemistry is fingerprinted and we don't find a face to match the fingerprint. Um, so I would say that getting to you know, your actual question, it would probably take us, you know, I would say half a decade to get really, really, really good at things that either look like something that's already here 
or combinations of any two molecules that have ever been discovered. And then perhaps the other half decade to get into truly novel chemical space uh, and be extremely good at it. And the reason that we're going to solve this problem is because we're already so good at what is known that we know where to look within the dark chemical space to give our models an unfair advantage. So I, Inveda is going to build the largest novel chemistry data set, but do so in a rational manner to actually crack the chemical code of the planet using language models. Um, but however, we're already good enough across millions of molecules that have never been seen before that our scientists are able to reduce the attrition over 99x. So usually, you know, everybody knows there's needles in nature's haystack but they would find 100 pieces of hay or a 99 pieces of hay before they would find one needle. But we can really hone in our search engine and say, no, you know, these other 99 don't look like they will in, in any way or form yield a medicine because of these properties of the molecule. And we can have our scientists focus in on that one. Uh, and so lo thinking long term, not only are we going to get better at having this process and mining nature's chemistry, which of course is the result of trillions of experiments over billions of years for really, really phenomenal uses, whether they be in human medicine or beyond, but I think we'll be able to understand and apply the chemical code of life towards many more applications, right? We started with and we're working on changing where medicines are found. Let's take that one step further and say, well, let's actually study all of human chemistry, the human metabolome, understand what it is and what it does and link it to health status. I think there'll be a world where we can actually create a blood test for every disease because this chemistry is represented in your blood. You could study all of nature's chemistry and say, hey, how does this plant actually fight off a pest without destroying the honeybees or insects that pollinate it and create a new generation of non-toxic agrochemicals? Um, you could take this one step further, combine all of this chemical code with the genomics databases we've built and understand how nature makes what it makes and create a new era of universal biomanufacturing and know the recipe for every single chemical. I think of Enveda ultimately as the company that will understand and decode the chemical basis for life on Earth and unlock it for human and planetary health. We're delighted to partner with you, Isra. Thank you so much. And last question um, as well. We are uh, we're really keen, of course, to expand our healthcare portfolio into the life sciences and delighted to have done so with the investment in Enveda and recursion and dimension. Um, because we think the pharma industry is on the cusp of real transformation. Uh, and so very happy to add Enveda to that portfolio. The pleasure and, is ours. Uh, and it would be great to hear from you why you have chosen Shinovic. Yeah, you know, I was thinking about this and it wasn't hard to come up with many, but I'll talk about three. The first and most important one for me was everyone I met at Shinovic had an insane sense of optimism around the world. Uh, some of the smartest people I've met, but had this idea that we're all able to and capable of driving towards a better place, and technology was a key element of that. I think in the business you're in, that's such an important thing to believe in as a person, not just the hat you put on when you walk into your investment desk at Shinovic, for example. That was very attractive to me and made every conversation a pleasure. The second thing was something, Christian, that you said to me when you visited our offices and labs in Boulder. You said that companies like Recursion represent an early stage investment for Shinovic. And, and if you remember, I actually had to laugh out loud because typically that is when most investors say, oh yeah, you know, we've exited, but we're strong supporters. So we've held on to our shares for, for 12 months past the IPO. You are one of the, if not the only investor that has ever said to me that a public company is an early stage investment. That represents both, I think, the time scales across, across which you expect this optimism to play out and the patience you have for your companies and their long-term visions. Because things like this do take many, many decades, hearkening back to you know, electric cars and digital cameras or the invention and discovery of statins, it takes time. Uh, so that was number two, made it a slam dunk there. But if there was anything else that was needed, it was your focus on sustainability. So obviously, core to Enveda's mission is preservation of biodiversity. 
I think Enveda is in a powerful position to both generate the incentive and the narrative to protect the world's ecosystems uh, and the amount of enthusiasm as well as seriousness with which Shinovic approaches that. I've never seen that in a term sheet, for example, was, I think, the, the final nail in the coffin, if you will, but so excited to partner with Shinovic. Thank you so much, Vista. Thanks. Thank you.